Hello and happy Wednesday. I'm already on card number three and the final card for Pastor Don Quam's uh, virtual stamp party. And so um, the last two cards that I've done for her party have focused kind of heavily on um, some fun designer series paper. And so I thought, well, let's um, try and do a card uh, for her party that features no designer series paper, but just some fun textures. Um, it's still going to be florally and such. And so I'm excited to bring you some uh, fun purple colors together. Hi, Rosina. Hi, Tori. Hi, Lois. So yes. Um, and with that too, I'm going to um, show you that fun embossing folder that I used last week. And I'm probably going to use that twice today. So hint, hint, today is going to be a double uh, feature day. So in a couple hours, I'll be back again. So today, right now, this is um, Dawn's card. And then in a couple hours, it will be my stamp camp card too. So double feature Wednesday too. Hi, Angie. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Pam. So good to see so many of you on here. So if you like purple, today is your card. So you can see that there's lots of purples and it's like, you know, it's so fun when it's um, January to pull out floral sets and start creating things that are brighter too. So a lot of you are like, oh, purple's my favorite. So, oh man, Angie, you're in Cancun. Oh, we all want to be there with you. I'd even bring the stamps. Even if they didn't get touched and we sat on the beach, I'd be great. <laughs> so wonderful. I'm glad to see you guys uh, um, always just checking in from wherever you are because a lot of you do get to get away in the winter time too. So thank you, Tori. Let me uh, set down my um, iPad here and let me also scoot around my camera so that you can see Dawn's um, card a little bit better here. So... Yes, Pam, it is going to be a double day. It, you know, um, that brings up a good point. So several times um, people recently have said, I wish I knew what time you're going to be he on here. But I also still help out, you know, with different things um, on the farm. And I have kids and, and just different things and trying to get things caught up before my surgery on Friday. And so um, I wish I could always be like, yeah, this is going to be this time and that time and, and such. So um, just know that in a couple hours I'll be doing the next one. And tomorrow I hope to do two as well. And that's about all I know ahead of time. I wish I could be that organized and have everything ready to go. Someday, that'll be my goal. It's just not the 2020 run one resolution that I've planned. <laughs> okay, so here is the card. And you can see that fun background um, embossing folder again. Um, I just love it. And I'm like, you know what? Um, I need to pull that out today because it just um, will, I think, really pop with this color. And then, um, like I said, I hope to, I hope it works for the next card I have planned in a couple hours too. Okay, so um, recently I have been using, um, if you follow along in the mini catalog here on page 31, here we go. Recently I've been using this pretty perennial stamp set and I hope you go, oh, um, if she uses that one more time, I'm not using the stamp set. I'm finally using the dies, but not with the stamp set. So I think it's kind of funny. I wanted some florally type of images and I wanted dies. So I'm like, this is the perfect day to bring that out. And so you can see how well it goes together, but yet I haven't used them together at all. So I'm using that. And then I'm also, um, going to, from pages 18 and 19, I'm going to pull in some of the pretty, pretty, um, accessories and embellishments from Hydrangea Hill. So you're going to be seeing that gorgeous grape ribbon and the pastels. And then um, if I can remember all these page numbers, my memory is usually pretty sharp. Page 65 has um, the double punch, the double double oval punch. And I'm using that punch because the stamp set that I'm pulling just um, the sentiment from and the little oval circle is the free punch party. I'm so excited that I think every one of my celebration hostesses has qualified for the stamp set. So that's exciting. So it's kind of my plug if you're considering like, oh, do hostesses do well during celebration? They do. They're all getting the $300 level extra stamp set besides all the regular benefits 
palettes. So that's where I'm pulling um, that from, and that's in the celebration brochure on page 17. So just kind of like to let you guys know that. So it kind of takes the guesswork out of shopping later um, and planning, you know, your orders or um, wish lists and such like that. So sometimes even looking things up will help you decide, like, if you have something that's already similar, if you can find it in the catalog to know that something else might work as well, too. So um, I'm going to start. Uh, my card base is Highland Heather. So that is um, the four and a quarter by five and a half folded this way today. And then I wanted to size down, usually my next layer um, naturally would be like four by five and a quarter. Um, I wanted to size it down just a little bit smaller so you see more of that card base. And so this is Gorgeous Grape 3.75 by five. And so, oh, here's my punch party. It's like, where's that stamp set? And it's on my um, my cut and emboss machine. So lots of fun stuff. I did the other day use the, the heart uh, greeting and that heart too. So there is that. So I was like, no, it's sitting on my cutting machine. It was that stamp set. What else is sitting on my stamp machine? It is the embossing folder I'm going to use. So it's called Painted Texture 3D Embossing Folder. And it does kind of look like, um, I have a good friend and um, she has a home that has almost this exact same texture, really thick like on her walls, so pretty. So I love what it does with the embossing folder with our cardstock too. So like I said, this is gorgeous grape and I'm just going to run that through. It only needs the thick plate and then the gray plate to run that through like so that run through so slick and so easy um and look how fun and texture that is hi lisa thanks for joining in okay so with that there kind of is you know some embossing folders it's like is there a right or is there a wrong and with that um there is kind of a flatter image on the back and more of a textured pop to the top of this. I almost think this reminds me of if you've been to Europe and enjoyed gelato, kind of looks like the gelato in their little bins um, before they serve it up. So <laughs> kind of a fun memory that way too. Um, and then with that, I'm going to um, go ahead and do some of my cutting because I don't have to stamp anything before I use the rest of my uh, cuts with my embot or with my uh, die cuts. So these are all from the perennial petals. Whoops. So I have a big flower that I'll use here. It's not like huge. And then this will be my inside. How fun is that? It's almost like a little pinwheel. And then this nice big leafy green one. It almost reminds me like of a strawberry plant. And I love it when they have two identical um, leaves or any image that you know that you're just going to want to use two of um, to run things through as multiples. So like I said, that is the perennial petals dies. And I'll show you what kind of is left in there. I always kind of get these tore up. Okay, whoops. Get that out of the way. There we go. Okay, so that is all left still in there. So lots of other fun things um, to build flowers and all sorts of assortments with and another whole flower arrangement there. So that is what that looks like. And let me go ahead and assemble um, the cuts here. So I think I'm going to start with the granny apple green. And I love how this granny apple green totally just pops um, with the purple. So I'm going to also run the two leaves through with that at the same time there. And these really, um, for being kind of intricate, uh, they really go through well. So um, yeah, so these leaves just come right off and then <laughs> They come off um, um, off of the die, but then I've got these little pieces there too. But I love how the insides just kind of like stick and, um, but not to the cardstock. And then this just comes out super easy too. I was going to use my um, brush to get out the extra pieces, but sometimes just uh, giving it a little twist back and forth, it literally fell apart that fast. To me, um, <laughs> Things like that sell me on a die if it's not too crazily um, intricate to get all those pieces out. And I'm just going to scrape 
off those little green things because sometimes having a lot of that can kind of bubble up and add a weird look to the next eye going through. So this big flower is going to be on Highland Heather and then that pinwheel looking inside is going to be on the gorgeous grape. Hello there Renee, thanks for joining in. And then this I'll put through. And then I think we'll be done cutting, at least with the machine. So yeah, this one, as you can see, that just like flew right out of there. And so does, yeah, the pinwheel just comes right out of the die as well there too. So I'm just gonna, whoops, there. And then you can see all the pieces already fell out. So hip, hip, hooray when that happens. Like seriously, I love it. So have all these pieces here. I just wanna make sure I put them on my white paper before I open up my ink pad so that I don't get to them um, lost. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do next is assemble um, the next layer then. So I'm going to put that fun embossed um, paper on my card base here. So I'm just going to take with my seal, run that along there quick. Oh, before I put that on, I do want to put some ribbon on. Sometimes um, I'll put this next layer on the card base and then wrap it all around. But with this being a little bit um, of a smaller finish, just by that quarter inch, I want to today, oh, it's really sticky, um, just run some of this um, ribbon just on this piece. I bet it's going to stick really well and hold that in place because of the snail I already have on there. So we'll see how that works. But yeah, it's one of those things I always tell you guys, you know, put your ribbon on first and then when I don't do it, then you can see that it can easily happen to anyone. All right, let's try and get that fed through there. So this is that new sheer ribbon in the gorgeous grape color. So gorgeous grape sheer ribbon, so pretty and so easy to work with because it's so sheer. Um, and what I was really impressed with was the amount of the gorgeous grape color that you see, even though it's sheer, um, it really gives you a definite, nice, gorgeous grape color. Okay, oh my goodness, we got all sorts of things hiding back here. It's kind of funny, but not. <laughs> okay, let me just scoot that. All right, so now this is ready, and I think I'm just going to actually take my seal and just run that right over top the ribbon because I kind of covered the ribbon with my original um, run that I had going. Okay, so I'm going to center that like so. So that's kind of what we've got going on so far there. And then um, next I'm just going to take a glue dot and press the center, whoops, the center of this flower here um, right into that glue dot like so. And when I pull away, the glue dot's going to, no, nope, it's supposed to be, <laughs> on the back side there. And I kind of want to give it, sometimes um, I just pop it right off. But this is pretty um, pretty intricate, so I really don't want it to be um, where I tear it off and then up, end up tearing my dainty little piece here. And then that will go right on top of the flower. And I'm not too worried about that little glob of glue dot showing underneath because that's going to eventually get covered up too. And then um, before I put that on, I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back side here. And about three dimensionals is almost all that fits with those little um, petals going out. So that I'm just going to uncover here. And then because the greenery is pretty um, small too. I'm just going to take and kind of on the front, well nope on the back side, there we go. Um, I'm just going to put a glue dot on each of these little leaves and then another glue dot on the stem of the greenery here too. So we've got that going. So this is where I kind of play, play. okay imagine how this is going to look. Oh. You guys, now this looks crooked. <laughs> I thought it looked okay, but then as I was going to put the flowers on, I'm like, I don't like how that's lined up. Now I do. All right. So now I'm just going to kind of um, just set this down here like so. Just kind of tap it. And then underneath there, I can fold in one of the leaves, one of the green leaves. And with that, um, with that 
glue dot on there it's just going to stick underneath and it's going to not stick to the flower but it's going to stick to my dark purple layer so i've got that going and then this is long enough and because i didn't put on tons of um, the glue dots i can just kind of um, tuck that under there too i don't want that stem to stick out too much over there but i'm just going to kind of go like so there and then I give that a good press because that glue dot's gonna keep that stuck there too. So a little bit putsier, and there's a reason why I kind of chose putsy. Um, I felt like Dawn didn't get any putsy cards. I usually do one putsy hostess card um, for virtual hostesses, and I didn't with her. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take one glue dot and cut it in half. Um, I wanted to um, get this tucked down because I don't want. Um, this to get caught in a card or anything else and I could have used the adhesive sheets and then just had adhesive on the whole back side of the greenery of this but I kind of always like when it comes to the leaves and stuff a little bit of a free flow to that so if I just have a half a glue dot and kind of with the tip of this I'm usually able to kind of curl it up underneath a tiny point so then we have some that looks like it's still free flowing not so tacked down but has a little bit of life left into it too hey there barb thanks for joining in so now we need a sentiment so like i said the punch party is great for that so there's a fun little frame there's two ovals that will work with the punch and then hope you feel better really soon i think we all just like to have like a get well card on hand so with that i'm just going to take some uh white cardstock this is the first stamping that this card's going to get so i'm going to go with a lighter outside which is the highland heather i'm going to open that up and I'm just going to tap that Highland Heather ink up onto that stamp like so. And with this being photopolymer, that's why I'm using the matte. And then the greeting, I want that to be darker so that that shows up really well. And the great thing about this set being photopolymer is that I can see directly into that center of that oval to know that it is going to work so like i said double oval punch is in the mini catalog page 65 and there's two different um, stamps that work with that i'm going going to use the larger oval circle so i can just feed that right in like so and see where it's at pop that out and there we go so that I'm just going to put off to the side here of my flower. So I only need to put a couple dimensionals because if I put too many, then it's going to go and kind of jump up and over that flower. And I never like the look of that except for I put the dimensionals on the wrong side. So I'm going to peel this one off and put it on the other side so that I can kind of just tuck it underneath there like so okay so there is the sentiment and it just adds that perfect touch to that card um and of course i want to put some embellishments on this today plus an inside to the card um so for the inside there wasn't really a lot to work with i wanted to stick with punch party um and not go to the perennial stamp set and so there's a tiny little just like flower um bloom so i'm just going to do four of those it's so tiny when i had just one in the corner it just looked like um it got set in the corner because it was naughty but if i put like one in each corner it kind of fills up the inside layer that you would you would want to um put your uh greeting and sign your name so that kind of helps fill that up so that's how that's going to go inside the card like that and then for the embellishments i forgot i was going to look up before i went live i know these are on back order 
and maybe as much as a couple months. So if you have these, good for you. Thank you, Marie. Um, but otherwise, just know that this might be a problem if you are thinking of ordering them and want them soon. They are on back order. Um, and I can also uh, let you guys know if you are interested in that when they're coming in. But these are the pastel pearls four different pastel colors. So it color covers the two colors I'm using um, today, the Highland Heather and the Gorgeous Grape. So I'm just going to take and um, use one of the Gorgeous Grape pearls here, slide that off, and that's where I cover up that glob of a glue dot in the middle that adheres this onto the flower. So that pearl helps with that. And then the Highland Heather color I'm just going to put on each side of the oval just to kind of frame that and add a little bit. And you guys know me, I like to do things in odd numbers. And so I wasn't sure if putting the two on there would be like, okay, that's good. But then kind of having this one over there, it almost does kind of make it look like, oh, hey, there are three for that odd number. Thank you, Lois. It's good to have you on here. Hey, Chris, how are you? So that is today's card. And that is card number three for Don Quam's virtual party. Let me get this turned around. So just like that, we're done with a whole nother week of a virtual hostess. And um, so she's thinking of closing her party February 3rd. So that still gives us a lot of time. Um, so if you guys want to order, how it works is if you use her host code and your order is a minimum of $25, then you get the three cards that I've made today as a thank you from both her and I for ordering. Thank you, Julie. Um, and then with that too, next week, depending on how surgery goes on Friday, I would love to demo um, for the next hostess and that is Kim Noss. And so that's my schedule so far. And I know you guys are all so flexible with me. I love that about you guys. So appreciate that, that there's not that added additional stress hanging over me. Um, and then I also, after that, have another hostess and that is Dawn Earlbeck. And so hers will be coming up and that'll be the beginning of February. So I still have spots open for those that might be interested in hosting during celebration, especially today now that I've um, demoed that punch party pack, it might get you guys thinking or not. And I'm also going to have a giveaway with um, an extra set or so, maybe even more of the punch party because my anniversary is coming up, my 25th anniversary with Stampin' Up! And the probably the best uh, way that I like to celebrate is not celebrating me, but celebrating you guys because I'm not me without you and I'm not here without you. I'm not um, doing any kind of celebrating without you. So I think having giveaways is the best way to celebrate an anniversary or any kind of milestone with Stampin' Up! So I'll be having that information towards the end of the month because that is when my anniversary is. I think it's the 29th. So yes, so I'll be back here in a couple hours. Hope to see you guys um, again then or hopefully you can watch the replay too. Take care. Bye-bye.